Hi, this is Nastin Yanovsky. Uh, we're teaching theoretical computer science. Um, we're up to section 2.2, .2, push down automatons. Um, okay, this is the first time I'm teaching um, outside of Brooklyn College. I'm doing this in my house, so this is a little bit innovative. Um, this is new. If you have some suggestions about uh, doing it, and you have some lighting, the sound, or something like that, then let me know. Okay, let's start. So, the last time we were talking about section 2.1, we were talking about context-free grammars. And we had this whole way of talking about context-free grammars and context-free languages. We had a way of describing this all. That's very nice. But you know what? We're still missing something. We're missing the machine that describes it. So, for regular languages, we had a nice machine. Okay, so let's go through this. For regular languages, we had regular languages, we had finite automatons. And we saw there's a lots of different types of finite automatons. There's a recur uh, d uh, um, there's, um, there's lots of different types. There's with epsilon moves, without epsilon moves. There's deterministic, there's non-deterministic. It doesn't matter. But now, we went up and we were talking about context-free languages. And we learned a lot about that. We learned a way of describing them. We described them with grammars, context-free grammars. And we saw all there's different types of grammars, this Chomsky normal form, etc., etc. But now we want to talk about the machines that have it. Okay? So the machines that can have it are going to be called push-down automata. Okay, great. Okay, so let's see. How should we think about these things? Um, okay. Well, let's go back and think about how we thought about, think about how we should think about finite automatons. We saw them all with diagrams, transition diagrams. We had that with the circles. It was very nice. But I'd like to think about it another way. I like to think about them as they're a machine, okay? And in the machine, it tells you what state you're in. So you're in state Q32. That's very nice. Okay, and that state changes as you go along. Okay, now, where would you read your input? Your input was read from here, okay? And so you had a tape, okay? And you would read your input. We did this on the board. We were always writing the words, and we were seeing if the words were accepted or not accepted. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here. You have a machine, A, B, B, C, A, B, A, B, something like that. Okay, and it would be reading. Okay, great. And in some sense, you were reading from the beginning on. Okay, you had a little I, and it was seeing, oh, I'm A. Okay, and then this would change to from 32 to um, 17 or something like this, and then it would move on over here to B, and then it would move on to over here and B, and each time it would change, it would change the, it would view the next letter, and it would change, it would go further, etc., etc. Okay, so that's a way of looking at the finite automaton. It's a machine that tells you what state you're in. Okay, it starts at the beginning of the input tape, keeps on reading across, and then finally, when it comes to the final thing, it's going to change into some state, I don't know, Q13, and if that state is an accepting state, then the word should be accepted, and maybe this should be like a little ding, with a, a, a green light or a red light, you know, signaling yes or no. Okay, that's a, that's a nice way of thinking about a finite automaton. Okay, but we saw finite automatons are great for certain languages, but as we get more and more complicated, the languages, we need more. We need more. So, one of the things that we saw we need is a little bit of memory. Remember, we had a very hard time writing a finite automaton, no, we had a very hard time, it was impossible to write a finite, a finite automaton that can do a to the n, b to the n. Okay, so question, can we somehow soup this finite automaton up so that we can add to it, um, so that it can do 
context-free grammars like that, context-free languages like that. That would be a very nice thing if we can add something to it. So, when you think about it, you want a little memory. You don't need a complicated memory. Notice all you have to do is keep in track how many A's you have, and then keep in track how many B's you have. You don't need that much memory. Okay, so a pushdown automaton is as follows. It's a finite automaton, except it has a memory. But the memory is a certain type. Okay? It's a stack. Now you all know what a stack is because you've taken elementary data structures. Okay? Stacks are things with push and pop and you can see what's on the stack and you can see what's not on the stack. Okay? So let's deal with that. So uh, the way to think of this is you're going to have a little I over here. Okay? Maybe, maybe it's an I looking down into the stack. Okay, you have a little I over here, and you're going to put in things here. I don't know, you can put in X, Y, Z, and again, it's a stack that you can pop things and push things on and off. And that's going to be your memory. Okay, and this whole thing, a finite automaton with such a stack, with such a baby memory, is going to be very helpful for us, and it's going to be able to kind of understand what... Um, describe context-free grammars, context-free languages. Okay, so let's do a little bit of an example. But beforehand, there's just one, one more thing that I have to say. It goes as follows. When we were talking about finite automatons, we saw that the following is true. Deterministic finite automatons was equal to non-deterministic finite automatons, which is equal to, by equal, I don't mean they're the same things, but they can do the same thing. Epsilon moves non-deterministic finite automatons. So, I'm not saying equal, but I'm saying equivalent. Whatever one can do, the other one can do. And we saw these are three different ways of describing finite atom um, regular languages. Great. Now, we're going to talk about PDA, pushdown automatons. Okay, but we're going to have something very, very interesting here. We're also going to have deterministic pushdown automatons and non-deterministic pushdown automatons. You'll see the epsilon move doesn't really make sense. So we're going to have deterministic pushdown automatons. And non-deterministic pushdown automatons. Okay, and you would think that they're equivalent. No, they're not equivalent. Okay? They're absolutely not equivalent. Okay? So, question, which one, of, in other words, there are certain things that a machine, this type of machine, can understand, and this type of machine can understand. There are certain type of languages that work with one of them and not the other one. Great. Not interested in going into it. Okay? But we're going to do only non-deterministic. It's going to turn out that non-deterministic pushdown automatons can accept context-free languages. Okay? Not deterministic. So, that's not going to be very interesting for us. We're just going to stand over here. So already, from the beginning, I'm telling you what... Uh, whereas, in the beginning, I started off talking about deterministic finite automatons, then we brought in these souped-up versions. But here I'm telling you, we're not even looking at that, we're just looking at the souped-up version. Okay, great. Now, uh, i got to give you an example. Okay, and the example is very very simple. So let's 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 do it. Okay, the example is very very simple. Okay, I want a language. I'm sorry. I want a finite automaton that recognizes this. That recognizes this language. Okay, and so what I want is as follows. Here is a word, happens to be both, accept, they're both accepted. I'm sorry, this word is accepted for this language, because there are five A's and five B's. Okay, so here's what I want the machine to do. What I want the machine to do is, I want, every time there's an A, I want to put down, you know what, we can put down the A. 
In other words, in the stack, I want you to put down an A. Okay, so here's the way I want the machine to work. I want the machine to start here. Every time it sees an A, it should put down an A. Great. Okay, then it goes on to the next one. The, the, the eye of the machine is always going this way. Instead of an eye, I'm going to point. And see another A, A. See another A, A. See another A, A. See another A, A. Okay, great. I could have put down X's, it doesn't matter, as long as I'm somehow counting how many A's. Then, when I see a B, for every B that I see, I want to pop off one of the A's. So, I see a B, I see a B, I see a B, I pop off an A, I see a B, I see a B. The stack is empty over here. I'm finished the word. Conclusion, this word is accepted. That's very simple. Okay? Good. Let's see what happens when the word is not accepted. This word is not accepted. It has six A's and five B's. What's going to happen? Well, every time I see an A, you know what? Let's do the X. Let's do the X. No, let's do the X. A, 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 A. Great. Okay, now every time I see a B, I'm going to pop off. Pop, 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 pop. Okay, the stack is not empty. The stack is not empty. I'm at the end of the word. Buzz, the word's not accepted. Okay, we need that the stack should be empty and the word should, and, and we should be at the end of the word. Okay, so this is not accepted. Great, let's do one more. Okay. Now I have six A's and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven B's. So what's going to happen is on my stack I'm going to have six A's, one, two, three, four, five, six, six A's, sorry. Okay. And then I'm going to count up my B's and I'm going to pop, 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 okay, pop. And then I'm going to have to try to pop again, because I have a seventh B here, I'm going to have to try to pop. I cannot pop. Okay? I can't pop. Okay? Now, when you can't pop, oh, you're going to go stack underflow, I guess it will be called, and you'd have a problem. This word won't be accepted. Okay, so that's the, that's the way it works, but now we need a little bit of a notation, so we're going to do the notation. Okay, so we're looking for notation. So, just like we built up the finite, uh, the pushdown automaton from a finite automaton, we're going to have a similar type of notation from that. Okay, so let's just remember how we did it with the finite automaton. Now, the finite automaton was very simple. We said, if we're in state Q37, and we see the letter A, okay, then we should go to state Q57. Okay? That was very helpful, and we built up all types of diagrams showing how this works. And of course we have to find deterministic, so we might have the, if you see an A over here, you also go into state Q62. Okay, that's fine. But now we have a new uh, thing to worry about. We also have to see the stack. We have to deal with the stack. Okay, we have to deal with the stack. So, think about the operations that you could do with the stack. You can push onto a stack. You can pop off the stack. Okay. You can look at what's at the top of the stack, and you can also you can push onto a stack. Okay. So we're going to deal with that as follows. Okay. We're going to deal with that as follows. Now we're going to talk about how to deal with a push down automaton, not a find out automaton. So we're going to have the following thing. Here's a typical thing. Watch what this says. This says, if you're in state Q37 and you see an A and on top of the stack there's a B, then, I'm sorry, let me restate that. Stop. If, on, if you're in state Q37 and you see an A, okay, okay, you see an A in the input and you pop 
something, you pop the stack and you see a B on top of the stack. And remember, a stack you can only see one letter at a time. Okay, because that's the whole thing of a stack. You can only see the top letter. So, if you see an A on the input and you see a B on top of the stack after popping, okay, well, you're not going to do anything else with the input. You're just going to keep on reading to the right, okay? But you could push on something, okay? And so the thing you push on is going to be a C. Okay, this is just an example of how it works. So, it's going to be something like this. If you see a B here, in other words, you pop, this guy is looking, okay, and he sees a B, so he, he pops the B, he sees the B, okay, then what you should do is you should push on a C, okay? And here is something else. If you see an A over here and you popped and you see a D, then you should push on an E. Pop, you should push down an E. Okay, so this is this new way of this new notation. We have to add on this new stuff in order to make sure that we can deal the old notation, but now we have to add on these two operations that you have to worry about with the stack. What's on top of the stack, and what could you push down onto, onto the stack? Okay, great. Okay, um, and again, you could also have non determinism. So, for example, could have this, which says that if you see A on the input, if you see A on the input, and you pop and there's a B on top of your stack, then push on C on top of your stack. Okay? But non-determinism is really an amazing thing because you can do lots of different things. Now, how do you think about non-determinism? We had that problem already. You have to think of like a multi-universe. In one universe you do this, in one universe you do that. And the point is, what are you, what's your goal? Your goal is to make sure, to see if the word can ever be accepted. Okay, so that's the second thing. Great. Now, we're going to do an example using this notation. But beforehand, I just want to do, just tell you, because you're all reading the book anyways, I want to tell you what the book does. So the book does three examples. One is o to the n, 1 to the n, which is exactly the same example as this. So the book does that, okay? And the book also does this, a to the i, b to the j, c to the k, okay? Where i equals j or i equals k. One of two, those two things are satisfied. Okay? And the book goes through how to do it, etc., etc. I'm just, I'm just doing this to hold your hand while you're reading the book, because you're definitely reading the book. You're not just doing this from, from, from our notation. Okay? The book does one more example. W, W, reverse. Okay? Which is basically a palindrome, by the way. Palindromes. We saw finite, we saw context-free grammars that do that. Okay? Now, they're showing you uh, push down automatons that do that. Great. I don't want to do this. I'm just I'm holding your hands while you're reading the book. So this is what the book does. Instead, I'd like to do this, which is kind of a, like I said, O to the one, B to the N, but we did it over here, so I want to do it again for you. Okay? Now, there's a certain problems we have to deal with. The book deals with it, and I'd like to just go through it. The problem is as follows. I need a method of telling when the stack is I'm in the bottom of the stack. I need a method of telling when is I'm in the bottom of the stack. So um, we have to think of a way of doing this. Okay, and what I want you to do is think of like a bird cage. Okay? You want a bird cage, you want what do you put on the bottom of a bird cage? You put a special sheet of paper on the bottom of the bird cage to make sure to protect the bottom of your bird cage. So too we're gonna we want something at the bottom of our stack so we can say, hey, this is the bottom of your stack. Okay? And we're gonna follow the notation of the book. We're gonna put a dollar sign there. Okay? You put a dollar at the bottom of your bird cage. No, you put a dollar at the bottom of your stack. And that way, rather than saying, oh, am I finished? Am I at the bottom of my stack? make a whole new thing about being at the bottom of the stack. What we just do is we have a special symbol, and if we read that symbol, if we pop off the dollar sign, what does that mean? That means we're at the bottom of the stack. 
Okay, and we'll see what to do with that. Okay, so you have to put the dollar on the stack. One other thing that's important. You're in a certain state, you're in another state. Okay, you see the letter A. Okay, let's say I don't want to pop off the stack. I just want to leave that stack alone. I don't want to pop off the stack. Well, rather than writing B, which means pop off the stack and see if you have a B over there, the book uses this notation. It says epsilon. Okay, epsilon. That means don't touch the stack. Okay. Also, you can put things on the stack. We saw how to put things on the stack. But let's say I don't want to put things on the stack. Well, if you don't want to put things on the stack, you can just put on epsilon, which means leave it alone. Okay, and you can use one of these or both of these or 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 you could also use it for the third one too. You could push things onto the stack without reading any letters. So even this can be an epsilon. Okay, obviously you won't want all three of them to be an epsilon, but this is it. So again, sometimes you don't want to read anything from the input, sometimes you don't want to pop anything off the stack, sometimes you don't want to push anything onto the stack. And this shows you how to do that. Okay, great. Okay, so now let's actually do what I did five minutes ago, this case with the A's and the B's. Let's actually use this formula. Okay, so as with finite automatons, you have a starting state. Okay, and as with finite automatons, it doesn't really matter what, your, what the names of the, st of the states are. Okay, the first thing you want to do before anything is, watch this. Before you read anything, before you pop anything, push down a dollar sign. Okay? This is like the beginning of every single assignment you're going to have because I always want to start my stack with a birdcage liner, dollars. Okay? I want to put something on the bottom of the stack to make sure it's there. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to start off empty, then it's going to put the dollar sign. Okay, great. Then you're going to come to a state. Okay, now let's just think what does he do? The state does the following. Every time he sees an A, he should put an A back on the stack. Okay, so it goes as follows. How many should you do? Well, as many A's as you have. Okay, so it goes as follows. For each one of these, every time I read an A, I don't want to pop what's on the stack because there's nothing on the stack in the beginning and I don't want to pop till I start coming to the B's. Okay? In the beginning I don't want to pop it from the stack. So every time I see an A, don't want to pop, I want to push an X. Okay? And this is what I told you. You can have whatever you want on the stack. Okay? The stack and the input tape are two separate things. I could put an A, I could not put an A, okay? We're going to push on a stack, uh, an X, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, you can put on a Z if you want. Okay, great. Now, how do I get out of this state? This is going to do this over and over and over for every single A that you see. So if you have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six A's, you're going to put down one, two, three, four, five, six X's. Great. Okay, but eventually you're going to come to a B. Okay, so what do you do? Well, when you see a B, what should you do? You should check what's on top of the stack. If you see an X on top of the stack, then you just pop that X. Okay, you can't see it until you pop it. You pop it, and don't push anything else on the stack. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my... My epsilons are turning into little e, so let's, okay, this is the way the book does it, we're going to do it like the book, okay? And this is the first thing, so the first time I see a B, and again, I'm going to have a lot of Bs here, okay, the first time I see a B, I pop off an X, great, okay, now we come to another state, okay, well, you're not just going to see one B, you're going to see many Bs, so this becomes... B comma X comma Epsilon. Don't put anything else on. Always just pop it off and keep on doing it. Okay, great. Next, how many are you going to do this? Well, as many Bs as you have. So let's go through it. You have one, two, three, four, five, six Bs. So 
one, you did already, two, three, four, five, six Bs. Okay? Every B, you pop off an X. Perfect. Now, you're at the end. Okay, what should you do now? And by the way, this is all non-determinism. What happens if, right over here, you see a C? Let's say C is in your alphabet. Let's say you see a C. What do you do? Well, you'll be somewhere here, and you'll die. We talked about this. Non-determinism, you easily die. So, you die. Or, what happens if there's an A over here? Same thing. There's no rule for telling you what to do, and non-determinism, when you don't have a rule, you die. And, when you die, you're, you're definitely not accepted. Okay, great. Next. Okay. Well, look, I popped off all these things. What's left on my, on my thing? Well, the only thing that's left is... The only thing that's left is a dollar sign. So look what it says. It says, don't read anything. Don't read anything. There's nothing else to read. Don't read anything. If you pop off a dollar sign, what does that mean? That means your stack is empty. We like that. Don't push anything on. Okay. And you're finished. So we're going to pop off the dollar sign at the end, which is a way of showing that you're, you're done. Okay. So that's a nice way of doing it. This little thing. Now, yeah, I just want to point out, these two things, putting on the dollar sign and taking off the dollar sign, is going to be in every one of our pushdown automatons. Because we want to have a way of dealing with an empty thing or not an empty thing. Okay, now, just to, you should work out yourself, what happens if I have one extra B? Well, if I have one extra B, I'm going to be here, okay? I'm going to have a B, and I'm going to try to pop off, but there's not going to be an X. There's going to be a dollar sign. I don't have anything with a B and a dollar sign. Okay? So if I have an extra B over here, if there's one more B over here, I'm not going to draw it, then it's going to die over here. Okay. Question. What if I have an extra A? Well, if I have an extra A, then I'm going to be here. I'm not going to have a B to read because I've already read for every A there's a B. Okay, and so at the bottom of my stack, I'm going to have X and dollar sign because I had, let's say, 15 A's and 14 B's. Then I'm going to have 15 X's here. I'm going to pop off 14 of them. The only thing that's going to be left on top of the stack is X and then dollar sign. Don't like that. Okay, well, I don't have anything that says if you don't read anything, what to do if you have an X on your thing. So I'll die right here. Okay, I'll die right there. The only way I'll ever get here is as follows, is when I have exactly the number of A's as I have B's. Okay, so that's a nice little example. Okay. Okay, so we did our first example of a pushdown automaton, now we're going to do a lot more examples, and we're also going to have to give you a formal definition of what a pushdown automaton is. But let's do some more examples first. Okay? So we did when a to, a to the n, b to the n, when they have the same numbers. How about when a to the n, b to the n, when they don't have the same numbers? In other words, there's, there's a different amount of that. Okay, so we're going to do this. So we're going to do this a little bit quickly. Now, one of the things about watching a video on YouTube is you should stop now. We're going to cover a lot more material in an hour and a half, or two hours, or whatever. You should stop now and try to do it on your own. In other words, press pause, see if you can do it on your own. Okay? Come back when you're, when you're ready. Okay? Um, we're going to do all the examples, so we're going to do them quickly. We're also going to do the homework examples, or most of them. Okay, so it goes like this. As we said before, the first thing you do is you put down... the dollar sign. Okay? You always first put down the dollar sign because you want, to, want to, you want to have a way of talking at about the bottom of the stack. Okay, great. Then, you have the following. You have a stack. You're going to read in a bunch of A's, okay? And then you're going to read in a bunch of B's. By the way, what happens if you read in a C at some point, or if you read A, 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 B, and then another A, or just start with B's? you're in trouble, unless you accept the empty word here. Well, no, 
can't have the empty word. The empty word is not accepted by this because the number of A's and the number of B's are both zero, not legal. Okay, get okay. then every time you see an A, I want you to put down an X. Oh, I'm sorry. Every time you see an A, don't mean that. Don't look what's on the stack, just put down an X. Okay? So this is going to put down M X's on your stack. That's very good. Okay. Now, eventually, you're going to finish reading all your A's, and you're going to come to the B's. So what do you do? Okay? And you have as follows. If you see a B in the input, okay, and you have an X on top of your stack, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm going to do this a different way. I'm going to push an A on the stack. Why push an X? Let's push an A. We did already an X. Let's just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's, you could put a, an elephant on the stack. It doesn't matter. Just push something on your stack. Okay, so we're going to push an A on the stack. Okay, I'm sorry. If you see a B on the input and A is what's on top of the stack, then don't push anything else. Great. Then you come to a state. And this state is as follows. Well, you're going to have some Bs. Okay, so for every B, if you see an A on your stack, don't push anything else. Just a continuation of that. Now, great. We've seen this something like this before. A to the M, B to the N, where M is not equal to N. Hmm, how do you do that? Well, you want to make sure that M is not equal to N. There are two possibilities. A, well, I shouldn't say A, one possibility is M is bigger than N. The other possibility is N is bigger than M. M is bigger than N or M is less than N, but they're not equal. Okay? These two possibilities correspond to these two things. Okay, let me go through. So again, if M is not equal to N, M is less than N, or, or is that? Two possibilities. M is greater than N. Okay, so let's do this. One possibility is you're going to read a B, but you're going to have a dollar sign on your stack. What does that mean? Your stack is empty. What does that mean? How could you have B and then the dollar sign on your stack? Well, the answer is, is there are fewer A's than B's. If there are fewer A's than B's, then you're going to still be reading a B when you have a dollar sign on your stack. Okay. Don't push anything on. Okay. Just go to a state, okay, and we have another requirement here, and I'll explain to you where. We have two requirements to be accepted. Okay. So one thing is, this is an accepting state. That's great. So you need an end in an accepting state. Okay. By the way, we didn't see that last time. But we will next semester. Okay, so that's one possibility. Okay, but one second. You have another requirement also. Two, stack should be empty. You want your stack to be empty. Okay, now I could have 15 extra B's. A to the M, B to the N, I could have 15 extra B's. So I want to get rid of all those extra B's. Here's what I do. Okay? Just take your B's. I have to get to the end of the word. Okay? I have to get to the end of the word. Keep on reading A. Keep on reading B's. Don't look at the stack because i got to tell you, if your dollar sign was taken off here, your stack is already empty. Okay? And don't push anything on your stack. That takes care of this case. Okay? This is the case when there are more B's than A's. Great. Now we have to deal with the case where there's more A's than B's. And we do it as follows. Don't read any part of your word anymore. You've read all your words over here. Okay? But you still have A's on your stack. In other words, you've finished all your B's, but you still have A's on your stack. You have more A's than B's. Okay? Then, don't read it. Don't push anything. Come to a state. Okay. 
you got to get rid of all your E's from the end. You have to get rid of all your E's. You have to get rid of all your E's that are on your stack. So here's how you do it. Don't read anything because I'm finished reading. I finished reading all my B's. I have more A's than B's. I finished reading all my B's, so I got rid of one of them here. I have to get rid of all the other A's from my stack. Don't read anything. Pop off A's. Don't push on anything. One second. Great. Now, at some point, what am I going to reach? Well, at some point, I'm going to reach the dollar sign. Okay, I'm going to come to the end of the stack. I'm going to reach the dollar sign. But I need an empty stack. Empty means no dollar sign either. And so what I do is as follows. Don't read anything because there's nothing left to read. Pop off the dollar sign. Don't push anything on because you want an empty stack. Come to an accepting state and you're done. Okay? So this, this does it. Great. Great. Let's do another example. Okay, you can press pause and copy it. We're going to go a little bit quickly here. Okay, another example, which we saw is an example of context-free languages, is balanced parentheses. Remember, balanced parentheses. I don't know how to spell balanced parentheses. Balanced parentheses. Let's just do some nice examples. Open, open, close, open, close, close, open, close. That's a balanced parenthesis. In other words, whatever is open, there's a close, and they match up nicely. Okay? Here's a simple thing to do. Here's what you got to do. You ready? Every time you see an open parenthesis, put it on the stack. When you see a closed parenthesis, you pop it off the stack. Okay? It's as simple as that. And we'll do an example. Let's just do an example here. Okay? You read this, you put an open. You read this, you put an open. You read this, you pop this off. You read this, you put another open. You read that, you pop it off. You read that, you pop it off. You read this, you push it on. You read that, you pop it off. At the end, your stack is empty. Okay? So, balance parentheses works well with stacks. Okay, let's do it. It's not a hard one. It goes as follows. Epsilon, Epsilon, dollar sign. First put your dollar sign on. Bottom of your stack. Should have done it over there. Okay, next. It's a funny little thing. You do two things here. One, you could see an open parenthesis. When you see an open parenthesis, you don't pop anything, don't look at your stack, just push on a thing. Push on an open parenthesis. You can push on an X. doesn't matter what you push on, but you might as well push on that, that on. Okay, next. When you see a closed parenthesis, then what you have to do is check that the top thing on your stack is an open parenthesis. So when you see a closed parenthesis, make sure that on top of your stack you have an open parenthesis, don't push anything more. Great. Now, when do you stop? Very simple. Okay. If you're at the end of your word and you see a dollar sign, don't push anything on. Just accept. And that takes care of that. Okay. So that's a nice little thing. Again, all of our examples are going to start by pushing on a dollar sign and taking off a dollar sign. Okay, stop it, pause the video, copy it, make sure you understand it. Do some more examples of inputs. Do a non-kosher example of inputs. You know, we should do a non-kosher example of inputs. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay. Here's your stack. You're going to put on a dollar sign. You're going to put on, oh, sorry. You're going to put on a dollar sign. You're going to put that on. Okay? You're going to see another one. You're going to put that on. You're going to have three opens. Then you're going to pop off one open. Then you're going to have another open. Then you're going to have another open. Then you're going to pop off that open. Then you're going to pop off that open. You have two opens. Your stack is not empty. This word is not accepted.
Okay, so but do some more examples, you'll see. It works very nicely. Okay, now what we have to do is go through a formal definition of what a pushdown automaton is. Okay, so a formal definition. Definition. A push down automaton. Now I have to say, this is a non-deterministic push down automaton. This is what I said in the beginning. This is a non-deterministic push down automaton, but we don't even mention that because we're not even going to deal with deterministic push down automaton. Okay. Is a six tuple. Okay. We saw before a finite automaton, I think, is a five tuple. Um, a context-free grammar is a four-tuple, so this is a six-tuple. A lot of these things we saw already because we delta, like I told you, a finite automaton, I'm sorry, a pushdown automaton is a souped-up finite automaton. So many of these things that we're going to see in this definition we already saw. So let's do it. One, oh, I'm sorry, is a, it's a six-tuple. What is it? It's Q, oh, we've seen that before. An alphabet, we've seen that before. Okay, that's called the capital gamma. We'll see what that is in a second. Okay, delta, that's our transition function. Q0 and F. Okay, we've seen almost everything here except this. Okay, and the delta is going to be a little bit more souped up. So let's do, let's go through it. Okay, so let's go through it. One, Q is a finite set of states, just like before. Two, that is a finite, that's sigma, we saw that before. Now, I'm going to write a finite alphabet, but it, now we have two alphabets here. We have what goes on the input tape and also what goes on the stack. Okay? We have to keep them. Now we don't have to they don't have to be different. In fact, sometimes you saw I put an I, I input an A and I put on an X. Sometimes I input an A and I put on an A. It doesn't have to be different, but we have to be clear about what we're talking about. Okay? There's a finite input alphabet. That goes on this input string. Okay, great. Next, three. Gamma, this is something new. So we write it in there. That's a capital gamma. Is a finite stack alphabet. Okay. These are the letters that go on the stack. Okay, so this is the new thing. Okay, finally, four. Okay. Four is the transition function. And as always, that's the hardest thing. We'll do that in a second. Let's just deal with the two easier things. Okay, let's do it over here. Five, what's five? Q0 is the starting state. It's a member of Q. It is the start state. Okay, and finally, six. It's F. Those are the accepting states. Again, there could be more than one accepting state. Okay, great. So, notice this we had before, this we had before, this we had before, this we had before. This is a new thing, what to put on the stack. And two, how should the transition function, that's going to be similar but not the same. So let's just remember what we had before. Let's just remember what we had before. Don't write this down. Let's do it in a different color. So. What was the transition function before for a non-deterministic, this is non-determinism, so you might as well write N for here, non-determinism, but non-determinism push down automaton, well, let's remember what, a no, what, the, what the transition function is for a non-deterministic finite automaton. So we have delta, which says as follows, 
Tell me what state you're in. Tell me what letter you see on the input. Okay? And I'll tell you which states to go into. Which states? Non-determinism is right there. Okay, great. That's exactly what we had for a finite automaton. But now we want to boost it up. And so we want to talk about not finite automatons, but push-down automatons. So it's going to be a little bit more uh, complicated. Okay, so let's go through it. By the way, we need also epsilon transitions. Okay, because as you can see, sometimes we're not going to read anything in the input. And not reading anything in the input is like reading in epsilon. Okay? So we saw this notation before when we were dealing with finite automatons. But now let's do it for the pushdown automatons. Okay? And it goes as follows. It's almost the same. You tell me what you're reading. I'm sorry, tell me what state you're in. Okay? And tell me what letter you're reading on in the input. And let's just remember how it looked. Oops. Okay. Just to remind you of our notation. Okay. But we have something else here too. So again, tell me what state you're in, tell me what letter you're reading, and tell me when you pop off the stack, what letter do you see? Okay, great. Okay, now, non-determinism, okay, but you have a few things here. You don't change what you're reading because you're just reading and moving to the right. No, nothing interesting there. So, we're not going to deal with that, but we will deal with the following. Don't move, don't move. Question. What state do you should you go into? And also, what should you push on the stack? Okay. So that's so again. Let's 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 somehow mm, do this. You know, this is one. That's one. This is two. That's two. This is three. That's three. This is which state you should go to. That's four. That's four. Okay. And this is five. Okay. So you have four pieces of information here. Okay. And you have four, four things to do. I'm sorry, five pieces of information. And this transition function is describing five different things. So that's a very, very exact. Okay? Okay, great. Okay, I just want to finish this off by showing you a little bit more because this transition function is not something we'll, we see a lot with. Um, so um, let's say we're in state Q57 and here we're in state Q32. We can describe this as follows. Delta, if you're in Q57 and you see the letter A on your input and you see the letter B, when you pop you see the letter B, then what I want you to do is I want you to do a few things. Maybe there will be something else here also, but one of the things that I want you to do is I want you to go into state Q32, that's that, and I want you to put the C down. Okay, so that's one thing I want you to do. You might also might want to go into Q59, uh, and uh, this could be A and B, and also put in a D. And so this would be Q, also Q59, and put onto your stack a D. Okay, so that's two different things you could do. That's a way of expressing the non determinants. Okay, so again, this is the function, this is the way to look at the function. Okay, there's another way of looking at it. The blue over here is just to remind you what a finite automaton is. Okay, great. Let's do some more examples. Okay. okay. So, um, the examples I want to do is from the homeworks.
So you can stop, do the homework problems, and you'll see the answers right now. Okay, so that's so that's a very nice thing. To do. So let's do the examples. Okay, great. Okay, so the, in Sipser's book, this is exercise 2.7a, and basically it says um, more, so it's a, okay, sorry, so the alphabet is a comma b, and we want words with more A's than B's. Words with more A's than B's. Now here we don't care about A to the N, B to the N. We don't care that the words are A's are lined up like that. Okay, so let's just do it. It's not hard. Okay. First thing, put the dollar sign. Next, well, how are you going to do it? Now let's just think about it before we do it. Every time I see an A, I want to push the A on. Every time I see a B, I want to pop the A off. Okay? And at the end, I want to have make sure that there's a lot more A's than B's. I'm sorry, that there's more A's than B's. Okay? So I don't care before or after. I don't care what the order is. So it goes as follows, okay, in this state, there's two things I'm always going to do, okay, when I see an A, don't look at what's on the thing and just push the A on. As opposed to that, when I see a B, when I see a B, okay, pop off an A, okay, and don't push anything else on. Great. Now. When do I stop? Okay, when do I stop? Well, when do I stop? Okay, so this seems like the right thing to do. I'd like to show you that it's not the right thing to do. Okay, more A's than B's. So what you would think to do is you say, okay, I'm going to push on every time I see an A, I push down an A, okay? And then when I see a, a B, I pop off, okay? Now, let me just show you what would go on here, okay? So sometimes it'll work, so for example, um, more A's than B's. So sometimes it'll work. So let's say the word is A, 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 B, A, 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 B, okay? So let's see what will happen here. You'll have a stack, you'll put on an A, 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 okay, you'll pop off, you see that B, you pop it off, you'll have another A, another A, another A, you'll pop off another B, okay, and that's fine, you'll have a bunch of A's, okay, that sounds very nice, okay, but it doesn't always work, okay, if you do that, it doesn't always work, let me show you how it doesn't work, okay, let's say we have the same not the same word, but the same A-B ratio. How about this? B, B, A, 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 A. Okay? And then, you can start off, you're going to have the dollar sign. Very nice. Now you have a B. There's no A's to pop off. Big problem. Okay? So that, this won't necessarily work. Okay? What you have to do is a little bit more complicated than that. You have to do the following. Okay, let's, let's just think. What was the problem? What we want to do is every time we see an A, we want to pop off a B. But we also want that every time we see a B, we want to pop off an A. The goal in life is to have more A's on your stack at the end. Okay, that's, that's, that's the goal. So whenever we see an A, we should pop off a B. Whenever we see a B, we should pop off an A. But 
at the same time, non-deterministically, we also want to, every time we see an A, let's say there is no B, push it on. Okay, so here's really where the non-determinism comes in. Okay, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to give you the answer and then we'll go through a couple of cases so we can see what happens. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, B comma A is a, every time we see an, a B and there's an A on the stack, pop it. But I also want to do the following. Whenever I see a B and there's nothing on the stack, what I want to do, nothing on the stack, or I don't even look on the stack, I want to push down a B. Okay. Okay. Same thing here. When I see an A, I want to push it on. But also, what happens when I see an A and there's a B on the stack? Well, I want to pop it off. Okay. Now, you have a problem here. The problem is, you don't know which one to do. Okay. This is where non-determinism is. Non-determinism says you try everything. Try every possibility. Okay. And if any one of them leads you to an accepting state with an empty stack, then you accept it. Okay. So which one? Do you know? Anyways, you don't really know. You have to try every single possibility. So let's try every single possibility. Okay. Okay, but one second, let's just finish it. What's going to happen at the end? At the end, you're not going to read anything. You finish reading. But you still have an A on the stack. By the way, if you still have a B on the stack, that means you have more Bs. Stop. Okay? You have more Bs. Okay, stop, which means you did. Okay? Go here. Don't put anything on. So again, what does that say? You finish reading your word. You have an A on top of your stack. Don't push anything on. Great. Now, you're almost there. But one second. You have a lot of other A's on your stack. You want to finish, if you're going to have more A's than B's, you want to finish with more A's on your stack than B. Well, you don't want any more B's on your stack. Okay? And so you have as follows. With any A that you see, I'm sorry, any A on the stack, get rid of it. Empty your stack. That's what it says. Now, what happens if you're here, you're emptying your stack, and all of a sudden you see on the stack you had a B? Hmm. The only way that could happen is if the Bs are all the way on the... No, I don't even know if that can happen. Anyways, you would die then. Okay, fine, but one second. What's the one thing we always have to do? We have to empty out. Not only do we have to empty out the other A's, but we also have to empty out the dollar sign. Okay, and that is an accepting state. Great. Let's try some possibilities. Hmm. Okay, we're going to try some possibilities. Ready? Let's say I have A, 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 B, B. So I'm going to put the dollar sign over here. Then, let's see how we can do this. I can put the A, A, A over here. And then, every time I see a B, I pop it off. B, B. Great, I have two Bs. Okay, I have, then, I'm going to come here, I have one more thing on the stack, I pop it, and then I have a dollar sign on the stack, I pop it, and go accept. Very good. No problem. Great. What happens if instead of this word, I have, let's erase what's on the stack, I have this word, B, B, A, A, A. Hmm, okay. So, here, I'm not going to be able to do this line. I'm going to have to do this line. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a B on here. Then I'm going to put another B on here. Then I'm not going to, I'm going to, I could do this. I could just put an A on it. But you know what? That's not going to help me. Okay? So as a human being, I can see the non-determinism. And again, what's the end result I want? I want a bunch of A's on my stack. Okay? So I see the A, so I'm going to pop this off. I see another A, I'm going to pop this off. I'm using this line. Okay, fine. Then, I see another A. Then I see another A. Okay, let's see. Hmm. I see another A. That's another A. Don't move. I see another A. And, I can't use this because I don't have B on my stack. 
I can't use this because I'm not reading, I'm reading an A. I'm reading an A, not a B. So here's what I have to do. Okay, I have to push the A on the stack. Push the A on the stack. Great. I read this A and I pushed the A on the stack. Perfect. Let's see what happens now. Now I have an A on top of the stack. I go here. I pop off that A. I don't have to go through here because I only have one extra A on the stack. Okay, and then I erase the dollar sign and I'm finished. Okay, that's very nice. Next, let's do another example. What happens if I have A, 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 B, B, B. By the way, they can all be mixed up. I'm just doing examples like this because we can have different things like this. Or how about, okay, so let's do this example first. What happens here? You know what, just, just to make it more interesting. Let's do this, B, A. Okay, now, A, A, B, A, B, B, B. This word should not be accepted. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to put on the A, A. I'm going to take off the A because I have a B. I'm going to put on another A. I'm going to take off a B. I'm going to take off a B. I'm sorry, I'm going to take off an A and A because I saw that. Great, now I have a B. Now I have a B. Okay, I don't have, a, I have a dollar sign on top of my stack, and I have a B. What should I do? Well, let's go through it. I can't do this because I don't have an A on my stack. I have a dollar sign on my stack. So I have to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the B on. Great. Now, I'm here, and I have a B on top of my stack. Well, I don't have a rule for that. I have to, what to do when there's an A on top of the stack. Conclusion, I die here. Conclusion, it's over. Okay, great. Let's do one last example of another word that's not accepted. Another word that's not accepted is B, 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 A, B, A, A. Let's just count. I have four B's and three A's. Four B's and three A's. Four B's and three A's. Let's see what's going to happen on the stack. It goes as follows. I put a B on, I put a B on, I put a B on. I see an A, I cancel it. I put a B on. Okay. I see an A, I cancel it. I see an A, I cancel it. Okay, great. I have a B on top of my stack. I'm stuck right there. Nothing to do. Okay, great. So that's a nice little example. It's so pretty that I have to take a picture of it. Okay, great. Next, let's do, that's 27A. Let's do 27B. Okay, I, I don't think these things are very easy, but they're homework problems. Let's do 27B, and it's as follows. The complement of A to the N, B to the N. And that means all words not of that form. Let's go through some examples of words that are not of that form. Okay? A, 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 B, B. That's not in that form. Let's do another one. A, A, B, B, B. That's not, that's not in A to the N, B to the N. Okay, but let's do another one. Ready? A, B, A, B. Where has another one? B, A, B, A. Those have the same number of A's and B's, but they're not of the right form. We have all our A's first and then all our B's. So, all Three, all four of these words are not in A to the N, B to the N. Conclusion, they're in our language. Okay, so the way to think of it is as follows. There's three possible ways that you can get into this language. One is, you have more A's than B's. Two is, you have more B's than A's. Three is, you're not of the right form. The right form is, all your A's followed by all your B's. Well, if you're not of all your A's followed by all your B's, that means somewhere along the way you're going to have a B A. 
Okay, you're gonna have a B followed by an A. Notice this doesn't have any BA, this doesn't have any BA, these two do have BA, BA. Whenever you have a BA it means you're not of the form a bunch of A's followed by a bunch of B's. Okay, so we have to we have to do this. This is not simple, but again, three ways to get in here. More A's than B's, more B's than A's, or you have a BA in there. Okay, so we're gonna start off like this. Like your starting state. To save some time, I wrote it up myself. Okay, so let's just go through this again. You have three possibilities. One is that you have more A's than B's. That means go here, put your dollar sign down at the bottom of your stack. Then read a bunch of A's. I don't care how many A's, but I'll tell you how many A's will be accepted. One more. Uh, than the amount of B's, okay? Because for every B, we're going to chop off an A in the stack. Then watch what happens. Just read a bunch of A's. I don't care how many. Then read one more. Because we need one more. Okay, great. Then, every time you see an A, put an X on your stack. That's great. Now, when you finish reading all your A's, again, you're of this form, a, a bunch of A's, okay? When you finish reading all your A's, then go to the next thing. Look at this, what it says. It says, don't read anything, don't pop anything, don't push anything. Just go to the next thing. You finish all your A's, you finish putting down all your A's, put down. Now, look what it says. For every B that you see, here you're going to see B's, for every B that you see, pop off an X. Okay, so you only put down the A's, you push down the X's. Now, every time you see a B, you're going to pop off an X. Great. Now, how many are you going to do here? You're going to do this for every single B that you see. Every single B you see, you're going to pop off an X. You're going to only put down X. So here, you're going to read one A. You're going to push down two A without. You're going to read one A without having that. You're going to push down two A's. You're going to pop off with those two B A with those. Every time you have an A, you're going to put an X X. Pop the X. Pop the X. Okay, great. Now you're going to come to the empty thing. Okay, pop off the dollar sign, and you have and you're in accepting state. Just want to point out, question. Here's where non-determinism comes in. How many A's do you just read, and how many A's do you push push on an X? And the answer is, you push on the X the amount of B's that you have. Okay, so you're really going to try both of these. Okay, but the ones that are going to work, that are going to get till here, that's going to be the ones where you have. All your extra A's are read over here, and then you do that. Great. Now, what's the other possibility? The other possibility is you have more B's. Great. So here's what you do. Every time you see, you put down your dollar sign, because that's the bottom of your stack. Every time you see an A, you push down an X. Very good. Every A you see, A, A, you push it down. Great. Then when you finish that, don't read anything, don't pop anything, don't push anything pop off your A's. Okay, that's very good. Then, when you finish that, pop off the dollar sign. Okay, so for every A, you have a B. So here you're going to have, you're going to push an X, push an X, pop the X, pop the X, but what do you still have? Well, you still have B's. So even after you finish reading your stack, you still have B's. So look what this says. Pop off your, for B, don't pop anything, don't push anything, just finish through your B's. So this word could have 15 B's afterwards. And that will take care of the 15 B's. Because again, what do you want? When do you, when do you accept? You accept when you're in an accepting state and your stack is empty and you finish the word. So we have to finish the word. Okay, what's the other possibility? The other possibility is you're just not of the form A to the M times with B to the B to the M. So here's what you do. Okay, here's the other, the third possibility. Could be something like this. A, A, B, A, B, B, A, A, B. I don't care what it is. Okay, so here's the possibility. Don't, you don't even have to push on the dollar sign here because in order to see that this is not of the form A to the N, B to the N, guess what? You don't even need it. You can do it with a finite automaton. Finite automaton means you don't even have to use a stack. 
So for this thing, for this third possibility, you don't even have to use a stack. So look what it says. As long as you see an A, boom, 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 just don't pop anything, don't push anything, just read, go here. As long as you see a B, just pop it, bit, don't do anything. Okay, but when you see a B, you say to yourself, hmm, this could be the interesting one. This could be the BA that gets it out of the not good form. So here, here's the BA that gets it out of the good form. Here's the BA that gets it out of the good form. Here's the BA that gets it out of the good form. Here's the BA that gets it out of the good form. Okay, so then do this. You're going to do this also. You have two, non-determinism. You do the B, you do the A. As soon as you get there, you just had a BA. Anytime you see a BA, you go into the accepting states. But one second, you have to make sure that you finish the word. So while you're here, finish the word. Okay. Notice, no stack. Anywhere here, nothing was put in the stack. Because telling that a word is not of the form, you can do that without a memory. That's that. Okay, one other little thing here. I get the impression that this could be done with one state. I don't know why. I just thought about it. I don't know why it's in two states. Great. Let's do another example. We're going to save some time. Bye. Okay. So this is homework problem 2.7c. We saw this as the context-free grammar. Just want to go through it again. But this time we're going to buy a push-down automaton for it. So it's W number sign x, where w reverses a substring of x for w comma x is in 0 and 1. So you have words in 0 and 1, we saw this before. So what you have as follows. You have the word w, okay, sorry, let's do that in a different color. You have the word w, and then you have a number sign, and then you have a whole word x, so this is the whole word x, okay, and this is w, and what do we have? That w reverse is a substring of x, so this is the same as this. Okay, just reversed. Why reversed? Okay, here's where it comes in the interesting. Because if you have a stack, then you can always push the words in. Then when you pop them out, they come in FIFO, LIFO, whatever it is, they come in in reverse order. So that's the same thing. So here's how, the, how this is going to work. What we're going to do is, when we have the W, we're going to push it on. Then, we're going to have junk, because other parts of x, we're going to have junk. It's a substring. Then we're going to pop off and read every word and make sure that they match up word for word and letter for letter. And then we're going to have more junk afterwards. Okay, so let's do that with a finite automaton, no, with, a, with a push down automaton. So you begin, you push down the dollar sign. Very nice. Okay, then Here's what you do. You're reading in W. So you see an A, push an A. You see a B, push a B. Don't even look at what's on the stack. Just push on to the stack stuff. Great. Then you're going to have a number sign. That's that number sign. Don't pop anything. Don't push anything. Just read that number sign. Now watch what happens. Now we have a lot of junk. I don't know what the junk is, but we're not going to deterministically just read through it. We don't care about the stack. We're just going to read through the junk. So look what it says. It says, if you have an A, don't pop anything, don't push anything. If you have a B, don't pop anything, don't push anything. Just do it again and again and again. Okay, that's nice. Okay, when you finish reading the junk, and how do you know that you finish reading the junk? You don't. You try all possibilities. Non-determinism. When you finish reading the junk, then you come here. Now you're reading the word in reverse. So look what it says. It says, if I have an A on, if I'm reading an A, and I have an A on top of my stack, pop it. Don't push anything down. If I have a B, then I have a B on top of my stack. So for example, let's do a typical word that, that's done in this thing. Okay, so I have A, A, B, A. Okay, then I'm going to have a bunch of junk. A, 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 B, 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 A. Okay, that's junk. Okay, good. Then I'm going to have A, B, A, A. That is the same as that, but in reverse. Okay, and then I'm going to have B, B, A, B, A, B, A, junk. Okay, so what's going to go on the stack? Well, the stack is going to go dollar sign. We always put our dollar sign. Then A, A, B, A. 
Then we're going to read through this, but we're not touching the stack when we read through this. This is just junk. Then A cancels with the A. B cancels with the B. A cancels with the A. A cancels with the A. I just read the word in reverse. That's a property of stacks. FIFO, LIFO. FIFO. No, LIFO. Last in, first out. FIFO, LIFO. Then I read the stack. Okay, so we finish popping off from the beginning of the stack. Holy cow. I think I missed out some things. Okay, so let's put them in. Because I missed out putting in, and we should read the end of the word. So I have to put in the, read the end of the word. So reading the end of the word is, reading the junk at the end, because we're going to have junk, is as follows. A comma epsilon, epsilon, B comma epsilon, epsilon. Okay, so that's a nice thing. Let me just add that in here. A comma epsilon epsilon B comma epsilon epsilon. Great. So that takes care of that. Okay, so it's a nice little problem. Again, let's just go through it again. Push on W, read the junk, pop off W, read pop off the end of the stack read the rest of the junk. Okay, this is 2.7D. We, I left this for our homework for context-free grammars, but I also, um, part of the homework is to do push-down automatons for this. So let's just remember, we have a bunch of words in zeros and ones. X1 number, X2 number, X3 number, da -da -da, XK. And then you have, this is what the requirement, there's some number i and j such that xi is equal to xj reversed. In other words, you have two of these things, they match up, but in reverse. Okay, so let's look what a typical word would look like. You'll have a bunch of junk, I don't care what. Then you'll have a number sign, then xi. Then you'll have a number sign and a bunch of junk. So this is junk this is junk, this is again junk, okay, so you have three times you're going to have junk, okay, but the point is xi and xj, okay, and they're reverse of each other, so this is just, this is a smaller case, they wanted you to solve the first one, 2.7c first, and then this one is just an easy case of the same thing, so it goes as follows, ready, put the dollar sign in, read the junk, so number, epsilon, epsilon, a number number B epsilon epsilon in other words don't put anything in the stack don't read anything in the stack just read through this junk then you're gonna finish with a number sign that's a part of the junk I guess okay so this is junk I'll write this is junk okay. okay then hmm. I think I made a mistake here, but we'll figure it out. Then, don't read anything, don't do anything. Start this word. This is xi. This is xi. And again, how do you know when to start xi? Do it non-deterministically. Try it all possibilities. Look what it says. When I see an A, I push down an A. When I see a B, I push down a B. So put into your stack xi. Okay, great. Then, number sign. Okay, so this number sign is going to start your junk again. You're going to do, again, just read past the junk. Don't touch your stack. When you see a number sign, do it. By the way, these things can be empty. So you can even start, xi can be empty. Okay, so when you see reading, whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. No, sorry, 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 that's a mistake. It's not in my notes. Great. Okay, so that's junk. Next, okay, I think this is also a mistake. I think this should be an epsilon. Okay, you're reading lots of junk here, and this should be like that. Okay, so that's 
Okay? Which means read lots of junk, do lots of different things, and it could be 10, 15 different XIs. Just keep on, just read past them. Then when you finish that, when you finish that, come to here, and here you're going to do XJ. What do I mean by XJ? I mean XI reversed. Okay, so you're going to pop off every single thing you see. So when you see an A, you pop off an A. This is the center of the, the idea. When you see a B, you pop off a B. Okay, same thing as before. You read it when you push on things into a stack. When you read it back, you're going to get it in reverse. You get it in reverse. Next thing, what do you see after your XI? You're going to see a number sign. Read pass. Guess what? Junk. That's the end. And at the end, you pop off the last thing in your in your in your stack, and you go to an accepting state. So that's very nice. Okay, there are two other ones that are not in the in the book, which I wanted you to do. Okay, and we're going to do them. Okay, we're going to do them, but I'm going to do them right now. Okay, so I'm, let me give you the homework. We're going to stop. I mean, you press pause. Try to do it on your own. Because I promise you we're going to have a problem like this. So here it is. A to the M. B to the 2N. Okay. Don't ask me about 0 or 1. You don't have to worry about that. And here's another one. A to the I. B to the J. C to the I plus J. Okay. We did context-free grammars for this, but now I want you to do a context to do a to do a push down and top and top. Okay. So that's nice. Okay. Now stop the computer. Stop your thing. Try to do it on your own, and then I'll give you. The okay. So I gave you two homework problems. I just want to go through them. A to the n, two to the two, uh, b to the two m. Oh, sorry. A to the N, B to the 2 N is a Nancy. In other words, A followed by twice as many Bs. Okay, so it turns out that there's actually two ways of doing this, and don't even look at the answer, you can think about it. You say as follows, okay, I want to count how many A's I have, and then for every B, okay, I should have I'll have twice as many B's as I have A's. So here's... <coughs> sorry. Here's a way of doing it. Ready? First what you do is put on your stack, instead of putting on one A, put on two A's. Okay? And then every time you see a B, just pop off one of those. So for example, if you have five A's and ten B's, so every time you see an A, put on not five A's, but put on two A's, so you'll put on, at the end you'll have ten A's, and you'll have ten B's, and for every B you'll pop them off. So let's just do that. So first you start off, you put down your dollar sign, okay, and then every time you see an A, don't pop anything, just put down two A's, okay, then when you see a B, and on top of your stack you have an A, and you popped an A, then, then you do start that, then every time you see a B, you're going to put an A, you're going to pop an A, and then you're going to do this over and over. When will you finish? When you see the dollar sign at the bottom of your stack. Okay, so that's very nice. The only thing new here is we have, usually you're only put in one. But you can do this, you can change the notation. You need two states to do this. Every C, you see an A, you push down two. But this is easily to none. Okay, but there's another way of doing it. Let's do it again. You have five A's and ten B's. Here's how you do it. Push down five A's. Okay, that's good. Every time you see an A, push it down. And then, when you see two B's in a row, then you pop one A. Okay, so you're going to push down five A's. Then you're going to see B, B, you pop an A. B, B, you pop an A. B, B, you pop an A. You do that ten times. Okay, ten B's and five A's, you got it. So let's see how you do that. You have it, push down the dollar sign, that's the bottom of your of your stack. Every time you see an A, you push the A on. That works, no problem. Okay, then you see a B. That's the first B. Don't do anything, just read past the first B. Then, 
When you read the second B, pop the A. Stop. Don't push anything else. Good. That takes care of the first B. The first A, you have two Bs. Great. Now watch what you're doing. You see another B. Just read it. Don't push, don't pop. Okay, just read it. Then you see the second B, you pop. Read, second B, pop. Read one B, second B, pop. Etc., etc. Finish like that. Okay, great. So that's pretty easy. Those are two ways of doing it. Okay, next. A to the I, B to the J, C to the I plus J. We're going to do that. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, let's just think about it. By the way, the reason why I gave this is because I want to show that you can do addition. Here's what you do. Every time you see an A, you're going to have basically the number of C's you have as equal to the number of A's and the number of B's. Very good. So, every time I see an A, I'm going to put it on my stack. I want to count how many A's I have. I also want to count how many B's I have. But I should put the same thing on my stack because I'm just going to count how many A's and B's you have and then hopefully the number of C's should be the same. So watch what I do. Put the dollar sign, bottom of the stack. Every time I see an A, I put an X. Again, you don't need to put an X. You can put a Z, you can put an A, you can put a B, you can put whatever you want. But I just, I'm counting one thing. Great. Then, when I see a B, I should put an X. Good. Next, when I see another B, I should put an X. Keep on putting the X's. Every time I see an A or a B, put an X. Great. Then, when I see a C, start popping off the X's. This finishes off popping off the X's, and we're done. Okay, so we did one, two, three. We did four for the homeworks. So these were two homeworks. This is three homeworks plus four homeworks. We did seven homework problems. Okay, plus we did three or four regular problems. So you saw a lot of pushdown automatons. You also saw the basic definitions of pushdown automatons. That's very, very nice. Okay, great. Question. What's the relationship between pushdown automatons and context-free grammars? Okay, and if you look at your, your chart of what you do, you see that they're, they're the same. They're related to each other. Okay, so Let's just show you how to do it. It's actually quite simple, okay? But they both describe context-free grammars. I'm sorry, context-free languages. So, context-free grammars are equivalent to, in other words, they have the same power, they can describe the same set of languages as push down automatons. Okay? Now, we have to go both ways here. Okay? If I give you a context-free grammar, you have to give me a push down automaton that accepts the same language. And this way also, if I give you a push down automaton, you have to give me a context-free grammar that accepts the same language. Well, we don't have time to do both sides, and you're not responsible for both sides, but we will do this side. So let's do it together. Let me just tell you, the book does this also, but I never do the example that the book does. So, uh, let me just show you the example that the book does. Book, again, my purpose in life is to get you to read the book. The book does, um, on page 120, does the following grammar. A, T, B, slash B. Okay. And T goes to T A slash epsilon. Okay, it's a very simple language. Okay, stop the stop the YouTube and see what this language does. Basically, it puts an A and then T and then a B, and then the T's can put any number of A's. So basically, this whole thing is the language A to the N. B, where n is greater than or equal to zero. Is that true? I think it's just equal to zero. No, it's not, it's not equal to zero. It's greater than zero. Okay, great. Uh, 
We're not going to do this example. You're going to read this example in the book. Okay, but it's a nice example. Okay, we're going to do something else. Not like when we steal from the book. We're going to do other examples. The other example I'm going to do is as follows. S goes to 0, S, 0, or 1, S, 1, or numbers. Okay? So basically, when you start with a word at the zero, you end with a zero. When you finish with a, when you start with a one, you end with a one, and you have a number sign in between it. Okay? This is a palindrome, but it's a special type of palindrome. They look like this. A word followed by a number sign, followed by the word in reverse. Okay? Okay. And I want to show you how it works. Okay, so in order to show you how it works, I want to show you, I want to derive a word. This is the word I want to derive, 001, number sign, 100. Zero, zero. Okay, so here's the way it goes. S goes to 0, S0, zero. that's those two. Okay, followed by 0, 0, S, 0, 0, that's those two. No, that's those two, sorry. It's the inner zeros. Okay, followed by zero, zero, one, S, followed by one, zero, zero. Great. And then finally, this S goes to the number sign. It's the only way you're going to be able to get rid of the S is to put the number sign. So it's zero, zero, one, number sign, one, zero, zero. Okay, so we derive that word. But I'd like to show you the way it's done on a stack. Well, you can figure out how it's done on a stack. What you do is as follows. You're basically going to put this word on the stack. Then you're going to see the number sign. And every time you see something else, you're going to pop it off. So we're going to need something like that in order to do this. We're going to need to describe the 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 context uh, the push down automaton using this but I want to give you the context free grammar and then we're going to do it now here's the amazing thing the context free grammar has all every time we do this from a context free grammar to a push down automaton the push down automaton has exactly three states so it's as simple as can be I'll give you the three states two of the states you already know and some of the things you already know so let's just do it Okay, well, okay. that's the starting set, that's the terminating state, and you know, because I've told you a million times already, what's the first thing you do? You put at the bottom of the stack, you put a number sign. Okay, and what do you do here? You don't read anything. If you see a number sign, don't push anything. Go to the accepting state. So all the hard work will be done in this state. This is standard in every single push down automaton we saw. This is standard in every single push down automaton we saw. So we have that. So let me just show you what, what, what it is. It's as simple as can be. It's as follows. There's basically two rules that you have to deal with. Okay, one rule says as follows. Don't read anything. When you see an S put down 0 s 0 don't read anything when you see an s put down what's the other rule 1 s 1 don't read anything when you see an s put down numbers notice all I'm doing is putting every time I see an s I put the rules down very nice okay great next something else I also have to, again, what I'm really going to do is I'm going to put in 001 on the stack, then I'm going to see the number sign, and I'm going to stop popping off 100. So I have to see what it means to pop off 100. That means when I read a 1, and I have a 1 on top of the stack, I want to pop it. When I read a 0, and I have a 0 on top of the stack, I want to pop it. When I read a 0, and I have a 0 on top of the stack, I want to pop it. So this is, comes out to be exactly like this. 
0 comma 0 goes to epsilon, 1 comma 1 goes to epsilon, and number sign comma number sign goes to epsilon. Okay. Okay. Now, this whole thing is extremely, and I mean extremely, extremely non-deterministic. Okay, so I'd like to show you how this word, which we derived, would be done with a stack. It's hard to take notes with a stack, but that's okay. So it's going to be as follows. Okay, I'm going to start, I'm going to put the dollar sign. Whoops, forgot one thing. Not just the dollar sign. I'm sorry, not just the dollar sign, but the S2. Okay, so I'm going to put the dollar sign there, then the S. Okay, now as a human being, I can see what s steps I should take. Question. I have nothing on top of my stack except dollar sign and S. Okay, so these won't do. Which one of these rules, I have three possible rules, which one of these rules should I do first? Okay, I'm not reading anything. I should change this S for this or this or this. Okay, now again, I have nothing on my stack, but I really would like to put that zero on my stack. So I better use this rule. Okay, and so what happens is the S goes off, and then what gets put on? Zero, S, zero. That's great. Okay, great. Now, I didn't even start reading my word. The word is this. Okay, so let's go through it. Well, I have a zero on top of my stack. I'm reading a zero. I better use this rule, and I'm finished. I get that. Great! Now I have an S on top of my stack. I can use one of these three rules. Which one of these three rules should I use? Well, I better get this zero there. So I take this S, cross it off, I pop it, and then what do I do? Zero, S, zero. That's very nice. Great! Now which rule should I use? Well, I better get rid of this. So I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. Which rule should I use now? I want this one. Notice what's on my stack. Zero, zero. That's great. That's exactly what's on my stack. Zero, zero, and then the dollar sign. Good. Now I want to put the one on the dollar sign. So I have S on top of my stack. I'm going to use which rule? Answer this one. So I'm going to put one. Oh, I'm going to pop the S and then put one S one. Great. Now I use this one, get rid of the one. Great. Now, look what I have on my stack. I have S and then one, zero, zero. Okay, what should I do now? I need to get number sign. So look which rule I'm going to use. I'm going to take this S, cancel it out, pop it, and put in the number sign. Great. That takes care of that. Okay, no, that doesn't take care of that. That's just put it, that's a, one of the rules I have. Now look what I have. Number sign, number sign. I'm reading a number sign. I have a number sign. I pop off the number sign. I go. Good. What else? I'm reading a 1. I have a 1 on top of my stack. I pop it. I'm reading a 0. I have a 0 on my stack. I pop it. I'm reading a 0. I have a 0. I pop it. Next thing, I have a dollar sign. Done. Okay? It's extremely non-deterministic. I knew which word I wanted to recognized by my machine, and so I did that. Okay, so that's very nice. Let me just give you the general scheme of how to do this, because this is just for this particular context-free grammar. But let me give you the general scheme of how to do it for any context-free grammar. Okay, so let's just erase this. Most of it is exactly the way we did it. But let's just do, be careful, erasing. Again, I can erase, but you have to rewrite. Okay. And it goes basically like this. It's the same thing as we had all along. It goes as follows. Put down on the bottom of your stack number sign, a dollar sign, and then S. S is the bottom, S is the starting variable for your context-free grammar. Okay. And then we have two things. Here we put down the rules. And basically, all the rules of context-free grammars are the following thing. 
don't read anything, but if you have a variable A, put down a word where the word, this is your rule. This is a context-free grammar rule. Okay. Okay. The W is terminals and variables together. Okay. And besides that, for every A in your alphabet, if you read an A and you pop an A, then don't push anything. That's it. That's it. So that's pretty cool. Okay. That's pretty cool. Okay. This homework, the homework problems to do things like this, but it's exactly it's exactly like this. We're not going to go through that homework. Um, that's very nice. Okay. So again, the whole purpose of these push down automatons is because they have a stronger language, and so we do that. Great. Okay, great. Now I'd like to ask you, now that we know push down automatons, I just want to say, I want to ask you to do the following languages as push down automatons. Okay, I'm going to wait for you to do them. And it'll be nice. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to do this one. Three of them, A to the N, B to the N, C to the N. How about this one? A to the N, B to the M, C to the N, D to the M. And finally this one, a word followed by a word. Okay, so Press stop on your YouTube, work out these three examples, start again. Okay, you didn't listen to me, but that's okay. Okay, so, were you able to do it? Answer, okay, I'm not able to do it, okay? Not only I'm not able to do it, they're not able to be done, okay? Now, let's just think about it, how would you do it with a stack? Well, if I put, let's do this one, if I put down all the A's, then I want to make sure that the number of B's are the same as the number of A's. So, I, for every A, I pop off a B. That's great. But one second, what about the C's? I have nothing in my stack anymore. What about the C's? Now, whenever I teach this, I always get another student who says as follows. Use two stacks. Okay, that's a normal answer. Use two stacks. So here's how someone would do it with two stacks. Ready? They push down every A. Okay, you'd have N A's over there. Then every time you see a B, you pop off an A, but you also, let's say you pop it off and you pop it into another stack. That way you're keeping the stack. Okay, then every time you see a C, you pop it off the second stack where all your A's are, or all your B's are, or all your X's are, but you'll have the same thing. Basically, you have a bunch of A's, you pop them off into here every time you see a B, then you're going to have a bunch of A's in this stack, and make sure that every C you have them like that. Okay, that's good. Okay, how about doing this one? Okay, anyways, we'll talk about two stacks in three minutes. How about doing this one? We know how to do it when it's A, where N, N, M, M. We did that. We know how to do it when it's N, and an N over here, and M's in over there. That's doable. But how about this? Anyways, let's try to do it with a stack. I push down all the A's. Then I push down all the B's on top of the A's. Then, every time I see a C, what should I do? The C's, I only have this on my stack. That's not good. I have M, B's, not N, so it's not going to match up. Okay, by the way, I can do this with two stacks also. Watch, here's how we do this with two stacks. On the first stack, push on all the N's. Then, on the second stack, push down all the, I'm sorry, push down all the A's. On the second stack, push down all the B's. On the, whenever I see a C, I go to the first stack and I push, pop off one of those. And whenever I see a D, I pop off one of those. Done. I can do it with two stacks, no problem. Okay. But 
I, we pushed down automatons don't have two stacks, they have one stack. Great. How about the word followed by the word? Okay. Okay. Now, if you think about it, the whole thing with stacks was whenever we put in a word, it always came out in reverse. So we had no problem doing W followed by W reverse. We do have a problem doing WW. Okay. So what's the solution? What's the solution? Well, I don't have a solution. I can't do it. Okay. But I can tell you how I could do it with two stacks, by the way. Ready? It's a very simple way of doing it with two stacks. Push the word down. The word is A's and B's. So push the word down in one stack. Then take the word and turn it over into the other stack. Think of a cup and turn it over like that. So let's go. You push it all into here. This is the beginning of the word. This is the end of the word. Then you turn it over into the other stack. So you're doing LIFO, FIFO, whatever the hell it's called. Okay. Then here's the beginning of the word. When you read the next word, it's going to match up exactly alike. So you can do it with two stacks. But we're not talking about two stacks. We're talking about one stack. How do you do it with one stack? Can't be done. Great. So let me just tell you what we're doing. So the point I'm trying to make is not everything is context free. There are certain things that are called context sensitive. Okay. Uh, well, there, there are certain more important things. Okay. Now, just because I tell you that it can be done doesn't mean it can't be done. Okay. We have to prove the fact that it can't be done. And that is done in section 2.3. Uh, where we talk about the pumping lemma. for context-free grammars. The pumping lemma. Now, we're not responsible for that. We're skipping it. Not because it's not good, but just because we don't have enough time. Okay? We're skipping it. The other thing that we're skipping is section 2.4, which is called deterministic push-down automatons. We've been ignoring those things the whole time, but it turns out that they're very important, and they're very important for programming languages. Okay? But it's just another topic that we we're not going to meet. We're going to we're going to tr try this. This book is full of interesting topics, and we're going to pass by them. Okay, so you're not responsible for these chapters, for these sections. Um, but I'd like to give you a broad view of what we saw so far. So we're pretty much finished section 2.2, and I'd just like to remind you where we're up to about that. So let's draw our picture that we love to draw every single day. I told you I draw it every single day, so let's remember. Okay, you have an alphabet, you have a set of words, you have the power set of the set of words. Remember, a language is a language is a set of words. So you have the subset the set of all subsets of words. Great. Now we have first month we talked about regular languages. That's very good. And then we saw, no, you know what? That's not enough. We need context-free languages. Okay? Because we wanted to talk about A to the N, B to the N. Great. I just throw, showed you three examples of things that cannot be done with regular languages. A to the N, B to the N, C to the N, and word, word. And the other one was there. Okay, those are not in here. They're out here. Okay, so there must be something higher over here. Okay, and they are. I'll tell you what they are. So this is regular languages. This is context-free languages. There must be something outside of context-free languages. Okay, these are called context-sensitive languages. Okay, great. Let's talk about let's talk about what machines correspond to this. So we saw there's actually three different machines, types of machines. Let's just do it again. We did this already. Deterministic finite automaton. But hey, there's bigger things than deterministic. There's non-deterministic finite automatons. Hey, but there's bigger things than non-deterministic. There's epsilon moves non-deterministic finite automatons. Okay? 
And we said all of those describe regular languages. Okay, great. Well, what describes context-free languages? That's what we studied today. And we saw context-free languages are described by non-deterministic push-down automatons. Okay, that's exactly what we did today. And we, the whole time we were stressing, we were stressing that these finite automatons are simply special types of pushdown automatons. Special types in the following sense. We don't... Finite automatons are just pushdown automatons where we don't care about the stack. If we don't look at the stack, we have a finite automaton. So a pushdown automaton, take minus the stack, is a finite automaton. Okay, so that's extra stack business. Okay, we have to talk about context-sensitive languages, but I think we had enough for this this thing, and so we'll do it next next time. Okay, this is a pretty picture. We're going to go on next class. We talk about context-sensitive. We'll talk about that for five minutes, and then we'll move on to that. Okay, have a great day.